Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, this is July the 3rd of 2024. And it is Wednesday. 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 <laughs> and this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad therein. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad therein. All right. And I want to welcome you all to my channel. You're always welcome to my channel. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to read step 12. But first of all, we're going to do the Our Father. Always the Our Father. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever into all ages. Amen and amen. Alrighty, we are going to read step 12. If you remember, the one I did yesterday was step 11, talkative, talkativeness and silence. Alright, step 12. Step 12. The joy of the Lord, remember too, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Always, always. Okay. Step 12. Let me get comfortable a little bit. I pray also that I don't have to keep clearing my throat. So, all right. Falsehood. This is falsehood. Various kinds of harm can be observed in the passions and lying. Lying is no exception. I think I may need some new glasses. I've not had these glasses changed now since 2017. So I think I need new glasses. All right. <clears throat> Various kinds of harm can be observed in the passions and lying is no exception. So one judgment awaits the man who lies out of fear. Another, the liar who has nothing at all to worry about. One man lies for the sheer pleasure of it. Another for amusement. Another to raise a laugh among bystanders. Another to trap his brother and do him harm. Do him harm. In the previous chapter, I said that when the tongue is not submitted to God, to be disciplined and purified, it will inevitably become a tool for sin. Our words may become a weapon to hurt our neighbor by saying cruel things to them or by slandering them. Talking too much may lead us to making a distasteful joke or mocking someone in jest when they are in a fragile frame of mind, when they are in a fragile frame of mind. Talking too much, even on matters of theology, can lead us to speaking heresies without, with not, without thinking. Another obvious sin that is empowered by the gift of speech is falsehood. Thus it follows on from the previous chapter on talk of, talk of, talk of, talk of I can't even say it, talkativeness. <laughs> and of course today... It is about uh, 10 after 5 a.m. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, my eyes. Okay. Laughter. Before I address the subject of falsehood, I would like to touch upon another matter St. John tackles in this brief chapter, joking and laughter. It is not entirely, entirely clear whether he tackles this issue, albeit in just one paragraph, because he considers falsehood and laughter 
to be intimately connected. If that is the case, there is no explanation as to why. Most likely, in this author's opinion, he sees lying, embellishing, exaggerating, and dr dramatizing as a way of entertaining others, as a way of entertaining others. I have seen men proud of their ability to lie and exciting laughter by them clowning around and joking, who have miserably destroyed in their hearers the habit of mourning. Let me read, let me need, read this again. I have seen men proud of their ability to lie and exciting laughter by their clowning and joking around who have miserably destroyed in their hearers the habit of mourning. The habit of mourning. It is a passage that may raise eyebrows for many. It may even seem unreasonable and excessively austere. Laughing here seems to be greatly discouraged as a real obstacle to repentance and spiritual mourning. But for most of us, laughter is a wonderful thing. We have all heard the expression, laughter is the best medicine. Yes, it is. Laughter is the best medicine. <clears throat> I always lose my place. Hang on a minute. Well, wait a minute. Laughter here seems to be greatly discouraged as a real obstacle to repentance and spiritual mourning. But for most of us, laughter is a wonderful thing. We have all heard the expression, laughter is the best medicine. Surely our lives would be unbearably dull and our literature considerably poor without wit. Without wit. That reminds me of something else, too. I have always said, I've always said, you know, if I couldn't laugh, you know, because it was said to me, well, you should act your age, you know, and not be so silly all the time. I said, well, if I couldn't laugh and be silly or stupid, you know, acting, I would go crazy. Act crazy or go crazy, you know. I've always said that. And I said, I'll never change. I, I will always be like that. You know, if I think something's funny or whatever. So anyway. All right. Uh, okay. It is a passage that may raise eyebrows for many. It may even seem unreasonable and excessively austere. Well, I've already read that. I'm not with it yet, people, so, so please excuse me. I'm not with it yet. But for most of us, laughter is a wonderful thing. We have all heard the expression, laughter is the best medicine. Surely our lives would be unbearably dull and our literature considerably poor without wit. So why is St. John so negative about joking and laughter? Perhaps an example I'm sure we can all identify with will help. Have you ever heard or even or seen something so funny you found yourself laughing uncontrollably for minutes, even hours? This can wreak havoc with a monk's prayer, with a monk's prayer. Before he knows it, a day or maybe two or three, two or three have gone by and the monk has barely managed to say his customary prayers and if he has his heart and mind were not really in them since they were distracted by laughter thus saint john warns monks the jokes will start coming back to you when you are at prayer what on earth what on earth monks or nuns could see or hear in a monastery that would create such hysterical laughter is quite beyond me but if saint john addresses the issue it probably means that he knows it to happen back in his day, and no doubt it all, it still happens today. It still happens today. But is it, it, it is reasonable to apply such a humorless 
discipline to our own lives. Oh, is it reasonable to apply such a humorless discipline to our own lives? I have known people who were in a state of despair and despondency to be lifted out of that dreadful condition by wit and laughter. Like the gift of speech, laughter can be used for good or ill. It can be moderate or excessive. It can be used at the right time or the wrong time. But I am willing to go even further and say that this need for moderate moderation applies even to those living the monastic life. Oh, excuse those boxes over there. Now, I know this is a depressing place. I know this garage out here is a depressing place, but okay. A wonderful example is a well-known story about St. Anthony. A hunter saw Anthony's monks lounging around and laughing. He was shocked by this and interrogated St. Anthony about this matter. The saint responded to the hunter by telling him to draw an arrow from his quiver and fire it with his bow. He did as the monk asked. St. Anthony then told him to fire another arrow, and the hunter complied. After the saint told him to fire a third, got to turn me page, the, the hunter said, if I keep stretching my bow, it will break. St. Anthony replied, it is the same with people. If you place too much strain on them, they will soon break. If you place too much strain on them, they will soon break. Okay, lying, lying. Let us now return to the main theme of step 12 of the ladder, of the ladder, falsehood. This is by no means an easy subject to tackle because falsehood is a very broad word. It covers a whole range of things from breaking the ancient commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Exodus 20 verse 16, which is of course a, a direct violation of the mother of the commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself. And that's Leviticus 19, 18. To saying, you look nice to a woman in a skirt she just bought, which you actually think makes her look ridiculous. You know, like giving out compliments that you don't really mean. Yeah. As St. John points out toward the end of his brief chapter on falsehood, we cannot put all lies into one category, let alone condemn every lie as a sin. He mentions an example from Scripture, John John. To oh, jo Josh, Joshua, Joshua, chapter 2, verse 1, that liars frequently appealed to in order to justify their love of falsehood. In this passage, the prostitute Rahab lies about the whereabouts of Joshua's men in order to protect them. A similar case of lying out of necessity is to be found in Genesis chapter 12, verses 11 through 13. That's Genesis chapter 12, verses 11 through 13. When Abraham tells his wife to say she, she is his sister, her fear, her fear, even her fear, envious men will kill him and take his wife for themselves. St. John is naturally concerned that people will go on appealing to those passages in order to avo avoid dealing with this passion of falsehood. At the same time, he does not deny that these Old Testament saints committed no sin by lying in those cases. Instead, he reminds us that only those who are already completely free of this passion of falsehood are able to lie without sin. Only when we are completely free of the urge to lie, he, to lie, may we resort to it, and then only in fear and out of necessity. We have said before that God wants us to become as little children, Matthew 18, 3. The more childlike in heart we become, the less we will lie, for falsehood is completely alien to innocence, is completely alien to innocence. 
A baby does not know how to lie, and neither does a soul cleansed of evil. Neither does a soul cleansed with evil. <clears throat> All right, rumors and gossip. Gossip is a big one, and so is rumors. All right, rumors and gossip. It is indeed a grievous sin to bear false witness against our neighbor. It is not always a terrible thing to spread unfounded gossip about our neighbor. Nowhere is this propensity for self-justification more apparent than in the sin of gossip and slander. All the time I hear Christians spreading malicious rumors about others and justifying it by saying, I heard this from a reliable source. Two things must be said about this. Number one, no doubt this reliable source received this information from another reliable source, and that reliable source found out from another reliable source. Before you know it, a malicious rumor has spread and become exaggerated over time through a chain of reliable sources. Yes, something gets spread around, and by the time it's done, it's, it's over a mile long. Adding more, adding more stuff to it. Yep. Before you know it, a malicious rumor has spread and become exaggerated over time through a claim of reliable sources. Meanwhile, a person's reputation has been ruined or others have been secretly suspicious of him. All because you could not resist a bit of juicy gossip. Spreading malicious rumors about someone is not much better than bearing false witness against them. Boy, this is dead on. This is dead on. Number two, reliable or not, founded or not, we should not spread such rumors. Just as we would not like others to expose our sins, mistakes, and stupid off-the-cuff remarks, so too, so too we should not expose the shame of others keeping our mouths shut even if we know for a fact that someone has someone has done is is the same is the easiest expression of love and compassion yet how few of us manage even that yet how few of us manage even that the extremely destructive nature of gossip has been beautifully expressed in the following antidote. There was once a man who loved entertaining people with juicy gossip. Sometimes the rumors he spread were true. Other times they were embellished to be more entertaining. Still other times they were completely false. Completely false. One day he learned that a man's reputation had been ruined as a result of something he had said in conversation. Racked with guilt, he went to his rabbi. He told him what had happened and asked if there was any way he could make amends. There was any way he could make amends. The rabbi asked, Do you have any feather pillows in your house? Yes, the man replied, I have many. Take one and the rabbi. Take one, said the rabbi. Cut it open and throw the feathers out of the window. Then come and see me tomorrow. <laughs> throw the feathers out of the window and then come and see him tomorrow. <clears throat> okay. The next day, the man went to see the rabbi again and said, Rabbi, I did as you asked. What do you want me to do now? The rabbi replied, go and find every single one of those feathers and put them back into the pillow. In disbelief, the man replied, but, but those feathers are long gone. That is impossible. You know that. You know that. Indeed, said the rabbi, and that is how it is with our words when we gossip. Yep, that's very true. <laughs> False promises. False promises. Another form of lying is making false oaths. Christ warns us against this in his Sermon on the Mount. On his Sermon, sermon on the Mount. Again, you have heard that it was said in the, in the days of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths. 
to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 33 and 34. That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 and 34. This is an extension of the ancient commandment. You shall not take the Lord of the, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Exodus 20, verse 7. Knowing that promises cannot always be kept for reasons beyond our control. Our Lord discourages us from making promises in God's name, thereby making his name unbinding and of no effect. He, go, he goes yet further and tells us not to swear by anything at all. Not to swear by anything at all. <clears throat> do not swear neither by do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black. And that's Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 through 36. Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 through 36. Okay. <clears throat> so Christ commands us to be not only honest and well-meaning, but simple and straight-talking. Not allowing our tongues to utter empty words or promises that may be broken by unforeseen events or due to our limited knowledge. Due to our limited knowledge. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever it, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. Matthew chapter 5 verses 37. <clears throat> okay, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. This passion of falsehood is something deeper than telling a lie, excuse me, out of necessity or to avoid causing needless offense. It is rooted in one of the wor one of the worst sins of all, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is the mother of lying and frequently it cause frequently its cause. Some would agree that hypocrisy is nothing other than a med meditation or falsehood, that it is the inventor of falsehood laced with lies. Falsehoods laced with lies. The original meaning of the word hypocrisy is pretense, and hypocrite means actor. For as long as we are pretending to be something we are not, inasmuch as we want others to see us not as we are, but as we want to be seen, we will be an embodiment of falsehood. An embodiment of falsehood. The passion of falsehood is a sickness of the heart, not an act of necessity. Thus only when we have purified our hearts can we be liberated from the sin of falsehood from the sin of falsehood that was good that was good and then the next one is step 13 despondency and tedium despondency and tedium is the next one now, I don't know what tedium means but it will be explained I'm sure alright <clears throat> that was good it's all good. It's all good. Very well explained. And I do elaborate a little bit, don't I? I, I elaborate a little bit. It was said, well, you need, to, you need to expound a little bit more. Well, I do. I do expound. <clears throat> you know? I mean, so, but yeah, falsehood. Yep. That was good. That was a good one. That was a good one. Of course, like I always do, I'll show, I show my book. The Ladder of Divine Ascent, 30 Steps to Heaven. 30 Steps to Heaven. And again, I hope that you all, hope you all will get this book. I hope you will. I mean, I, like I said, I have learned so much. I have learned so much. This last three, 
I'm going to say this last two years. When I, when I once started opening up my mind, when I once started opening up my mind and my heart to receive the truth, then I started really taking, taking things in. I started taking things in. That's the most important thing. You've got to open your mind, open your heart, and accept what you read. You know, it, let, take it all in. Take it all in. There's nothing false about this book. There's nothing false about this book. There's nothing false about orthodoxy. I can say that with 100% honesty. There's nothing false about orthodoxy. Nothing false. That's true. I mean, it, it's been said too, well, am I going to go to hell if I'm not an Orthodox Christian? No. No. I myself want the truth. I don't want to be in a false religion. I don't want to be in a false doctrine, a false religion. And Orthodoxy is not a false doctrine or a false religion. That's why my son-in-law always said, do your own research and find things out for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Look up things for yourself. Look up the early church fathers. Some ministers talk about the early church fathers, but they don't, you know, the early church fathers from the first century, the first century, just think, all of these centuries, how many denominations there are. A lot more than, than I even thought. There's more than 40,000 denominations. It was supposed to have been one church. One church. One holy and apostolic Catholic church. But when the West broke from the East... Because they wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to do their own thing. Thanks to Martin Luther and others. This, the church was, was divided. You know. The church was divided. Like I said. There's a Roman Catholic church right here in Mattoon. A big Roman Catholic church. Would I go to it? No. And Protestantism was birthed from the Roman Catholic church. Look it up. Look it up. Roman Catholicism, I mean, Protestantism was birthed from the Roman Catholic Church. That's true. All these denominations were birthed from the Roman Catholic Church, basically. It's true. It's true. You've got to look things up and find out for yourself. But again, I have learned so much this last, I'm going to say the last, well, altogether three years. <clears throat> but more so this last two years, I have learned so much. I have retained so much, you know. And to those of you that might want to cross themselves, but you just don't because you think it's a Catholic thing. I do it. I, I, I do it sometimes do just it makes you feel peaceful. And yes, it does chase away the demons. It chases chases away the demons. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Try it. In the name of the Father. You take your two fingers and your thumb. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can go down to your stomach in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or you can do it in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit to your heart. You know, all the mirrors, you know, so many people, so many of us have put down Catholics. Have put down the Catholics. But you know, they've got some things right. They've got things, some things right. 
they have some things wrong as well, but they have some things right. You know, like I said, you know, we've got all different kinds of churches here in Mattoon, all different denominations, but we don't have one Orthodox little Orthodox parish. If we did, I'd go. I would go. True worship, divine, the divine liturgy, worship. You have to be willing to be taught, to be retaught. You have to be willing and open to it. I'll never forget that time I talked to Father James. That was Jorcy and Michael's uh, priest, Father. You have, first thing we have to do, Gloria, is get you out of your head. You've been programmed to believe a false doctrine. You know, first thing we have to do, Gloria, is get you out of your head. That's what he told me. So, well, now Gloria is getting out of my head and finding out truth. Finding out truth. It's just truly amazing. Once, once you open up your hearts... Open up your hearts to the truth. Yes. And let God lead. Let God truly lead you. God is the truth. The way, the truth, and the light. But anyway, uh, it, it, makes, it makes me want to tear up. It makes me want to tear up. So many people have so many people have so many things wrong and it took me all these years thanks to my son-in-law and my daughter it took me took me all these years to finally find the truth i love my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandson very 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 dearly so anyway, you guys, I love you all with the love of Christ Jesus. I love you all with the love of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and like, a, like I always say, you know, love one another. Love one another as he has loved us. Love one another as Christ has loved us. Be kind to one another. Lift one another up. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Talk to the Lord. Do the Lord's prayers. And one of these days, I'm going to get into that prayer book, and I'm going to start reading reading it. I'm going to start reading it on here. I'm going to start reading it. I've showed it to you before. I'm going to show it to you again. I keep it, you know, where it's out of all the dust and stuff. The pocket prayer book pocket prayer book for Orthodox Christians it's awesome it's awesome truly awesome there's prayers for everything all different types of prayers for everything for everything There's morning prayers, there's evening prayers, bedtime prayers. Beautiful. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Symbol of faith. The creed. The creed. Additional morning prayers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just read this, okay? Just, just this. Additional morning prayers. Additional morning prayers. A prayer for this beginning of the day by Saint Philaret of. Yeah, I need. I think I need. I need new glasses. 
for St. Philaret of, well, I can't make that one out. Okay. <clears throat> o Lord, grant me thy peace to greet all this day is to bring. Grant me the grace to surrender myself completely to the holy will, to thy holy will. In every hour of this day, instruct and guide me in all things. Whatever tidings I may receive in this day, teach me to accept tranquility in the firm belief that the holy, that thy holy will govern all. Govern thou my thoughts and feelings in all that I do and say. When unforeseen things occur, let let me not forget that all is sent by thee. Teach me to behave sincerely and reasonably towards everyone, that I may bring confusion and sorrow to no one. Bestow on me, O Lord, strength to endure the fatigue of the, of the day and to bear my part in its events. God, thou my will, teach me how to pray. Pray thou thyself within me. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful prayer book. And this is the newest one. This is the newest prayer book. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Oh, my eyes. Yeah, that's what it is, people. I think I need new glasses. I, I need my prescription strengthened a little bit. That's what it T.I. is, I believe. I'm not gonna but I'm not gonna get new glasses though. What I mean is I'm gonna just get the lenses. I already have new glasses. And it was said that I didn't look very good in them because they're too big. I said, well, th those are for those are for older older ladies, and I happen to like them. I think they're pretty. I think they're pretty glasses. Of course, they're not tinted. These are these are the transitions. Like you know, when you go out, they darken up. They darken up when you go out. So the doctor had told me, he said, "Well, wear your other glasses, you know, in the house. But when you go out, wear these." So anyway. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a start. It's a start. The, the prayer book. And it's not just scripted prayers. It's all biblical. It's all biblical. It's biblical. It's all biblical, people. So let's do the Our Father prayer, and then I'm going to let you all go. So have a very, very beautiful day today. Again, this is Wednesday. This is July the 3rd of 2024. So let's do the Our Father and I'll let you all go, okay? For our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever and ever into all ages. Amen and amen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I love you all. I love you all. Be blessed and not stressed. Again, keep on the whole armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Keep on the belt of truth, the boots of peace, the sword of the spirit, and the shield of faith to be able to come up against the wiles of the devil because he seeks to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he roams about like a roaring lion, seeking to whom he may devour. Don't let it be you. Don't let it be you, and don't ever take that armor off. Don't never take that armor off. So this, this is, again, this is Gloria Drummond. Jesus is the only answer ministries. Till my next video will be chapter 13. 
this was chapter 12. This is chap this chapter 12. So, all right, you guys. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.